Last month, voters in the Franklin County town of Conway declared it a safe community. The designation aims to prevent local police from detaining people based on actual or perceived immigration status. The bylaw goes on to say that people in the town welcome both immigrants and non-immigrants alike. But Selectman John O'Rourke, who's been a vocal opponent of the bylaw, believes it should be repealed. He joined me in the studio to discuss his perspective. Uh, I was surprised that it passed because uh, essentially uh, the people in town were not in favor of the bylaw. But I but think the, the, the vote uh, would, which would demonstrate otherwise. Well, I, I think uh, what happened is that those people who were in favor of the bylaw got enough people there to, to swing the vote in their favor. But essentially, uh, uh, all the information I have uh, indicates that uh, the majority of the, the residents of Conway are not very happy with being called a sanctuary community. And so now, what what are you what are you thinking? What are your what are your next steps if you really feel that there are more people who are against it than were for it? Well, I, I would uh, I would hope that uh, uh, someone would bring forward a citizens' petition. Uh, there have been a couple of people that spoke to me that they might do that. Uh, if that doesn't happen, I may I may do it myself. In uh, time for the next town meeting, or what would be the what would be the um, the course? Well, we usually have a special town meeting in the fall, uh, and actually we may have a town meeting sooner than that because we have another matter coming up that may require that. So um, uh, it's either going to be at the next special town meeting or, or maybe next year. And so I know that this has been an issue that's been ongoing on the town. It's come before town meeting in, in a previous year. Um, and you've been quoted as saying in the past that the safe communities designation would attract criminals, gang members, drug dealers, and terrorists to Conway. Is that, first of all, an accurate, um, accurate quote? Well, well, certainly uh, some of the comments I've gotten about the, the, uh, the passage of the bylaw was that people are saying, well, now we're going to attract people to Conway because we have this label of sanctuary community uh, that uh, you know we may want not want in Conway. And essentially, you know, if if we're not checking who's here illegally, uh, we don't we don't know who those people are. They could be criminals. They could be drug traffickers. We don't know. But to, to your concern about mm -hmm. the potential for Conway now drawing these types of folks, Conway's a very small town, fewer than two thousand people. Do you really think that this will increase that element in an otherwise very quiet town? Well, certainly I would hope not. But there are citizens that are concerned that now that we do have this label, uh, that it could, could attract people that uh, are here in the country illegally. There have been quite a few letters to the editor about this in, um, in, in the Greenfield Recorder, one of which said that we are appalled at how Conway's leading officials have taken it upon themselves to decide unilaterally what is best for our community. And uh, that was written by Paul Jenkins and Lynn Hanley back in 2017 when the matter came before the town meeting and it was raised and you made some comments and then the matter was quickly tabled. Mm -hmm. uh, is that something that, that you're attempting to do here, make a unilateral decision for folks? In terms of in terms of stating that you know voters have brought this issue up, they've passed it. it there is now a safe communities designation for Conway, but now you're working to possibly work to repeal that. Well, you know there there are are citizens who are concerned about it, and I think that uh, as I say, they may come up with a a citizen petition to repeal that bylaw, because essentially, the the Conway bylaw is basically inconsequential because state law basically since, nine, uh, since uh, 2017 July, since the uh, uh, Supreme Judicial Court came out with their ruling in the Lund case, basically said that uh, you, you couldn't have a situation where local officials are detaining uh, those people uh, past uh, uh, their custody for other matters. Okay, uh, and essentially between the state law and federal law, which is the really the uh, the predominant law that rules for uh, uh, immigration matters, uh, the Conway law is is essentially inconsequential, except for the fact that it puts a label on our town 
that a lot of residents don't like. So you're saying from a legal perspective, you think that it is, is not material. And I've spoken with, with uh, police officers in other communities, police chiefs in other communities, who say, look, immigration is a federal matter. Exactly. We're not going to touch it anyway. We have plenty to do at the local level. So really, so we're talking about this is just a, a disagreement on paper, essentially, then. Uh, it, 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 it's that as well as the fact that, that now we have this label that a lot of people are not happy with. Well, we'll have to see if, if it comes up for appeal. Something else I wanted to ask you about, you're, you're chair of the, the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. I know that in Hampshire, the Hampshire Council of Governments has been having some financial challenges. They're short about $4.6, $4.7 million. Mm -hmm. Are you concerned, is Franklin, uh, the Franklin Council of Governments, are you facing a, a similar financial challenge? Uh, not at all. They're totally different in terms of, of uh, the way they're managed. Okay, the, the Franklin Council of, of Governments, Franklin Regional Council of Governments, FERCOG, is run very well. Okay, uh, the Hampshire Council of Governments is not. And so, uh, totally, totally different. I know they're separate legislative bodies, but it's similar in that it's two small communities helping, you know, banding together to support some various initiatives in the towns. Well, well certainly an advantage of the, of the FERCOG is that it's a regional planning agency, whereas the Hampshire Council of Governments is not. Uh, and, and that uh, they don't get the funding that FERCOG gets because of that. And essentially they have some other problems, some personnel problems. And do you have any particular opinion on those personal problems? I know Russ Piotr, who is the former general manager of this station, has come forward and said that he feels like the organization, the Hampshire Council of Governments, to be clear, Hampshire Council of Governments, should dissolve, should close. I was at the, uh, the meeting of the Hampshire Council of Governments when, when Russ um, submitted his resignation and made his statement, uh, his very strong statement about to what he felt that the... Uh, the HCOG should do, and part of that was to dissolve because of the fact that uh, uh, he doesn't feel it's being run properly. And do you have an opinion about that? Uh, I, think that's a, I think that's a common opinion, that it's not being run properly. All right, well, I appreciate coming in to Connect Your Point today to share your viewpoints.